Okay. <laughs> Is this literally just like the darkest shade of black possible? This literally just zero, zero, zero? Because it sure looks like it. There's that white bar again. Guess we're on the void. <laughs> Isn't this floor amazing? It's zero, zero, zero. What is this place? The vibes here are on a totally different level. In treasure. Where is it? Yeah, we went from the crystal caves to the abyss. So many Dark Souls inspirations. Here, Kieran, up ahead. There's something among those pillars. Don't point out to him. He can use his master ball that he got from being a champion, and we don't want him doing that. The game is not going to bring that up. I bet. Stones, the hidden treasure? Give me a moment. I just need to check something. Throw a Pokeball at it. I can get the hidden treasure of Area Zero. I, I can finally beat Harmonia. Miki, you're still going on about that nonsense? Shut up, this. Harmonia is everything I've ever wanted. The ogre. That's about it. He's got strong Pokemon. He can go anywhere he wants, and he can be friends with anyone. I loved Ogre Pond since forever ago, but even Ogre Pond chose him over me. But Kiki, you did your best too. Even you, sis. Being all nasty toward him at first, but then boom, you're like best friends in no time. I, well, I've got nothing. I worked so hard, and for what? I still lost in the end. This, this is all I have left now. Found it. This crystal is definitely what we're looking for. Wow, four lagged a whole lot. Go on, Kieran. Pull with everything you've got. Show us the hidden treasure of Area Zero. What? All right, so a crazier cutscene now. Are we not going to run over and stop him, maybe? That looks like something I 3D printed recently, honestly. It's just a Zelda rupee. I've literally 3D printed the hidden treasure of Area Zero. I don't know what to tell you. I'll put this back now. <laughs> what a derpy little guy. Oh, he looks so happy. So tiny. Small boyo. You know, usually when someone does something like that in media, no. What? I didn't do it. You're mine. Okay, they actually did use that. Wow. Anyway, usually when someone does that in media, where they kind of forcefully do something they shouldn't in some ancient place. That's usually a bad sign. It usually unleashes something evil that ends up attacking everyone nearby. But <laughs> little turtle dude was just like, hey, I got to be out and about. That was Carapacos? You caught it, right? Finally. Very well done, Kieran. The fact that you brought along a Master Ball tells me you are well prepared for this. Now I can study Terrapagos whenever I want. But there's no time like the present. Think you could give us a little demonstration of Terrapagos' power right now? Well, you heard her, Harmonia. Okay, I do gotta give them props for actually using that. Him using a Master Ball that he would have presumably got from being the BB League champion. I'm also itching to see what Terrapagos can do. Get ready so we can start. Oh. Okay, this story got a bit more interesting. I'll give it that. Is it going to be a double battle again, or is it going to be a single battle? Well, let's see here. I can U-turn if I need to. Also, there's like a little fly buzzing around my monitor that's really annoying here. Yeah, I imagine this would be singles. <laughs> at least it's better than Leon catching a turn just with a Pokeball, or at least trying to. Are you ready? Yeah. All right. Get in position. Oh, we're going to battle on the 0, zero, zero colored battlefield? Oh no. There's at least some dabbles of color. 
coming from the crystals and stuff. So it's not completely dark at every point. I hope you brace yourself. This time, I'll definitely beat you, Harmonia. Oh, is he gonna lead with it? We're challenged by Pokemon Trainer Kieran. Pokemon Trainer Kieran sent out Terrapagos. Oh, Terrapagos just doesn't listen to him. It's like, what the hell? Why do you catch me, dude? Go, Terrapagos. Show Harmonia what you're made of. Terrapagos, the Indigo Disc. Oh, it's just a single battle against the one Pokemon. Terrapagos is Terra Shift. Oh, opposing Terrapagos transformed. Okay, so I just have to defeat you. Okay. I don't know what to do. I'll just lead with this. So this is the Hidden Treasures troop form. This. Gonna win for sure. The music's pretty cool. What? Oh. Critical hit. How do you get critical hits even at a time like this? What are you, the hero of the story? Yeah, that's right. Huh. I'll probably send an Ogre Pawn at some point here. Like auto crit move? Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, uh... I can U-turn into Ogre Pawn. Well, I could do. Flower Trick again, it's funny. I don't get as much damage. Is he gonna... S I'll do it once to see if he says something again, but like... Oh my god! Tapagos' power should be far greater than this. Could it be we're missing something? I'm you turning. Music's pretty cool. Alright. I'm sending out Majora. I want to know if he says anything about this. Yeah, look at this ground. Oh, now it's getting some light on it. No, he doesn't say anything this time. Alright, well, Ivy Cudgel. Big smack. Almost. Yeah, I guess Terrapagos just goes ahead and listens to him. I can still terrestrialize in here, it seems like. Bam! Give me a little bit of your health. I will use that to heal 5 HP. Or 6. I... Yeah, 6 looking over at the stream manager. Let's read the numbers for a second. Why? God, if I just had Terrapagos. If I had the hidden treasure of Ares Zero, it would make me stronger. But it'd let me beat Harmonia. Kiki, that's enough. It's time to stop this. No, something's not right. Its terrestrial energy output is far too low. Not to mention the fact that it looks different from the illustration in the Scarlet Book. So, Terrapagos isn't the hidden treasure of Area Zero? No, I'm sure it is. We must be missing something. A way to transform it into the treasure. Of course. Terrapagos is made of terrestrial energy. Kieran, you must terrestrialize Terrapagos this instant. My hunch is correct. Terrapagos will resonate with the energy from your Terra Orb. Well, so I'm surprised he didn't try to do that before. He was trying to go all out against me here. And the hidden treasure will finally reveal its true brilliance. Yeah, if only there was some kind of gimmick. But... Oh, sun cut. And the whole thing collapsed. I knew it. The Scarlet Book was right. Arapagos in its fully awakened form. I love how they do sound effects like the hands put together there, but still no voice acting. A little turtle. And they all died. <laughs> the explosion. Oh, he did.
Things are getting out of hand, Kiki. We should return Terrapagos to its ball. Okay. Back, Terrapagos. Oh. Oh! Huh? We'll go back inside. Why? Well, it was your Pokemon for a whole five minutes. Oh, this is gonna be a raid battle? Yeah. Oh, or at least a twofer here. Okay. Its energy output is going haywire. We're all in serious danger if we can't bring it under control. I'm sorry, kids, but please. We need to stop Terrapagos. Come on, Kiki, you need to do something too. We've got yeah, Terrapagos under control. The text is going by so fast. No. This wasn't supposed to happen. This is all my fault. Terrapagos, the hidden treasure of Area Zero. Yeah, just double here. Oh, my health carried over. Oh. Do I have to terrestrialize? Oh. Okay. And this was the only Pokemon that she had, apparently. Oh. Oh, things are actually starting to collapse. Oh, I can't terrestrialize. Retire Orb lacks a charge and needs to terrestrialize your Pokemon. After two more attacks, you'll have the energy you need. Okay. Is this a turtle on a turtle on a turtle? Ooh. The use of the light motifs here. Ooh. The world turtle. Uh, rage powder. Center of attention. Well, poke. Using a bear to reduce damage? In that case, terrestrializing your Pokemon might help. Yeah, I tried. Here, a sandstorm. Starstorm. PK, Starstorm! Yikes. This is a pretty epic final battle theme, not gonna lie. Rage powder. Becoming the center of attention doesn't really seem to matter here all that much. Critical hit. Yeah, but Vivian's probably about to go down here, which means someone else is gonna get terrestrialized. Yikes. If only I had Meloetta, here's a metronome. All right. Oh, and you're still not fully healed up. Uh. Hmm. I'm sending in Sonder here. Yeah, have you had a nickel for World Turtle Pokemon? You have two, it's not much, but you get the joke. Make it three, there's a third? It's your chance. You Sarasalize Pokemon to strike back. <laughs> uh, maybe in a sec here. Let's see how much damage I eat with this next attack. Yeah, I love this use of the light motif. So good. Screw it, I'll be able to terrestrialize with someone else here shortly anyway. This will be fine. Oh no, my Sinish just knock out. This isn't good. It's just too strong. Maybe something will happen. Like maybe it's like the Coridon thing where Bob where it's semi-scripted. Actually, it was fully scripted in the Coridon versus Coridon thing, but semi-scripted here in this case. Where the moment I terrestrialize, it'll take out that full shield or something or other. I don't know, let's see. Find out. Maybe I'm going to become like the every type while I'm here. Nope. I do not. I'm a spooky ghost. Come on, Sonder. Bitter malice. You've got to be shitting me right now. Well. Yeah. Yikes. 
might be a hot second before I can terrestrialize again now, right? <laughs> yeah, after two more attacks, you'll have the energy you need. Guess I'll just... That's two more attacks from it, right? Like two more turns, I can feel free to do this. Oh, you have earth power. Okay. Let me see here. No, I need to attack twice. Ugh. Well. Bonk. I'll just keep at it here. <sighs> well. I'll get one more attack this way and Vivian will probably go down. And then I'll terrestrialize with someone else that has full health. Alright. I'm really down with the music though. Bonk. Is it scripted to lose? I doubt it. I assume that something will happen when I land a terrestrial attack. It's probably just that ghost type attack specifically don't affect it, which I wish I would have known before. But that's the way the cookie crumbles, I guess. Okay. I'm sending in Gladiator. What I'll do. Maybe I should have brought Raul for this final encounter. Maybe what I should have done. All right. Come on, dragon darts. Because this is a situation, final encounter, where it's like, yeah, I should just be going all, all out. Oh, well. All right. And now that I think about it, in terms of art on the bottom layout there, I technically do actually have a custom art of a rule that was turned into one of the emotes of this channel. Though, the person that made me the art of the rule is someone that later decided they hate me in the Latin community. So, it would feel pretty weird to use. Grappagos absorbed the terrestrial energy. Oh. What? It absorbed terrestrial energy? Oh, my print's done. Energy began to gather, has begun to gather around Terrapagos. Look at this. Oh, another one done. Put up another barrier of such strength that used the terrestrial energy absorbed to do so? I'm gonna get in there and battle, Kiki. Harmonia's doing all the work. Oh, he's gonna help me out? It's no good. I'm useless. Get this filament off. Uh, I wonder if this will count as two attacks. Dragon darts. I doubt it, but, uh... Grappa Ghost confuses and angers you. Sick of this counts as two attacks. Wah! The little smidges of filament off my build plate here. That'd be really sick if that counted as two attacks, but I doubt it. Seems like a place that I might need to use some max revive. Put that back on. I do need to print another one of these because I do now have three green apple sprouts. I'm at two pox. But another time. All right. Yeah. It does not count. So. Man, I guess I can get some attacks with Lotus here afterwards. Being terrestrialized. That's what I can do. All right. Dragon darts again. Can Terra Starstorm go through Shedinja Wonder Guard? That's assuming Shedinja's a Pokemon that's available in this game. That is a good question. Alright, Terra Starstorm. Yeah, yikes. Alright, send in Lotus here. Maybe after this round, Kieran will join in and I'll have more breathing room to do stuff. I don't know. Now, Harmonia, Terrestrialize your Pokemon so it shines once more. Alright. Yes, I should Terrestrial Toxic Spike because that seems like a good idea. Alright. Yeah, I'm going to have to use Max Revives here or else I'm not getting through this. <laughs> I don't think. 
Yeah, not quite as cool as the every type galore from earlier, but hey, still pretty cool, right? Uh oh, you're faster than me. Please. Oh, thank goodness it doesn't one shot. Please tell me this one shots your shield. Or else I'm screwed. Well, I might lose this. I don't really have anything with priority. Is that a physical attack? Earth power? Does it count as that? You're not even going for it again. I don't think there's any way I save Lotus here. Unless I just get really good RNG and you tough it out. But like... I think I do got a bank on this though. Here. Well, max revive it is. I'm using it. Here it comes. It is possible that I might just be able to lose and then retry here. But, meh. He pee stall it? What, until it runs out of moves? As long as I get two shot and I have max revives, I can spend those. Feels kind of crummy using my max revives, but I do what you gotta do here, I guess. Alright, on my faster Pokemon, that can for sure attack first. What I better do here. Now I gotta charge up my terror thing again. Of course it does, just a smidge over half. Got two more attacks. Is there someone out there that has that? Oh well. I don't care about keeping my save file super duper pristine here anymore. Use those max revives. I don't know why there's like these one frame flashes of the world being kind of weird. All right, well. Yeah, it uh, it's coming up here. By the time this is published on YouTube, it'll have already passed. All right, I can get an attack with Majora, right? Surely. Surely I can. All right, I be cudgel. Yeah, I'm faster. Big smack. I could almost take out the Thingamabob without even terrestrializing at this point, but uh, get Christmas YouTube viewers at home. Yeah, this is why you should go follow the Twitch so you can tune into things as they happen instead of having to wait. Uh, <laughs> all right, let's see here. Yeah, once this is through, I'll be doing that as well. It is getting late. Yeah, terrestrialized dragon darts. Watch Terrapicos get a crit here and wipe me out. I lose my mind. Yeah, let's see here. I know I'm gonna immediately lose this. If I was in a better position, I would just take out the shield normally at this point and then save the terrestrialization for the immediate next shield. This is what I do. Come on, big damage with the next one. Oh, yeah, gosh dang it. It's at set amounts of HP for each thing. Trapico has come to the onslaught and broke its stance. Trapico has absorbed terrestrial energy. One final comb over for some special stuff, or is this the end for Scar and Test Pile? I'll probably do a smidge more stuff and showcase some of the events and things. Absorb terrestrial energy yet again? I really can't keep doing that over and over, though. No guarantees, though, but yeah, probably. Kiki, Harmonia's in trouble. You need to help him. But I can't. Can't help anyone. Vote now on your phones. Let's do it together. Is this gonna be a special cutscene? Yep. Ooh, the music. I love how it's using the light motifs here that we've heard during the game. No voice acting. We look like a couple of twinks. Hydrapple super sweet syrup. All right, hopefully this can help give me some breathing room now. Yeah, it seems pretty good here. Ooh, that's a big thing. Change its type. Well, what type is it now? Okay, I'll help out too. Honestly, better late than never, I guess. The two of you need to clean this whole mess up. Yeah, I wonder if 
Kieran's attacks will count towards this as well. I do wonder here. Here. Let's see. Just doing that thing where the next move you use is resisted? Maybe. Watch I have no effect like my one attack from Sonder there. Terra Star Storm. Oh, that did less than half my health this time. Super effective. Sticky candy syrup. What? Become even slower. Yeah, it does have to be my own attacks. Seems like. I love to see someone do the challenge of doing this with no terrestrialization. But yeah. What? I, I know I wasn't terrestrialized. I. What? <laughs> There, Star Storm. I'll be able to get one more hit after this, probably. Yeah, I can. And then that'll set up for Vivian. The Terrasal is coming up here. Yeah, keep making you slower. Yeah. Why well, I did less than half? Yeah, I. No. I I don't understand what. I don't understand the confusion of where it's perceived that I had confusion, because I did not have... Wait. Oh, I less than half damage to me, is what you mean. But it... What? That still doesn't make any sense. It's done more than half my damage when I wasn't terrestrialized. That's what it's consistently done, but now it's not. Oh, I can get one more thing, Bob. Later, tough it out so you wouldn't feel sad. I guess I get one more attack here. Like, I'm I'm very confused here. <laughs> but I guess maybe this old ally from the Sword and Shield adventure might be the one to get us through this final shield, after all. My type, I appreciate sure Stella type moves like Terra Star Summons instant deal super effective damage to Pokemon who are terrestrialized, like Dynamax Cannon. Maybe then, but it's been doing more than half my health and damage before. But now it's doing less. Seems like. Seems to be the case. There we go. Down to the final notch here. Therapa goes to come to the onslaught, and I didn't get to read that fast enough. Yeah, <laughs> may well be. Looks like I can't absorb any more energy. I pick up, but put up another barrier. Time to attack. I'm to end this, you two. You have my permission to go all out. And I didn't really understand what was being said either, so. I'm at fault too. All right, looks like Glader is gonna be the one to finish things off here. With dragon darts. Critical hit. It would have been really fitting for Vivian to finish things off, but Glader had to tough it out so I wouldn't feel sad. Maybe it'll go inside a ball now. Did before. I guess you just have to not terrestrialize it when it's down here. Oh, don't catch. I know I can count on you, Harmonia. You got this. I'm kind of tempted to look up what happens if you say don't catch or if Kieran will try to catch it. I assume you just come back later. It's like, oh yeah, it's cool for it to go be in its environment. What matches its colors? Let's use a master ball. This kind of matches its colors, the dive ball. Kind of fitting. Look, like the dark blues even at the bottom. Luxury ball is kind of cool. Do I have a premier ball? Premier ball is kind of cool too. But yeah, if you have... Oh, I don't have a beast ball. That would have been pretty cool there. That would have been pretty neat. That's too bad. This match is a color spray best here. But yeah. Netball? No. No, we're not barbarians. All right, I'm using a dive ball. It kind of matches its colors. Big spins. Ooh, the light motif. Say what you will about this game, it's music rocks. Not even like a critical capture of a capture that's unique specifically to that. Is, is 
it over? All right, well, Briar didn't turn out to be evil here like I thought. <laughs> Is everyone okay? Or a robot? Uh, vote now on your phones. Oh, thank goodness. What a relief. She was pretty psychotic, though. Let my obsession lead you all into a very dangerous situation. It's simply inexcusable. I'm so sorry, everyone. Yeah, she's pretty crazy. You should be. You're really fixated on this Rassel stuff. You've got to keep your obsessiveness in check. Yes, you're absolutely right. I... I messed up, too. I looked up to Harmonia for so long. I wanted to be like him so, so badly. I didn't know what else to do. But I guess I just don't have it in me to be like him after all. Finally. Finally, I can let it go. Uh, vote now on your phones! Don't sell yourself short. But, but, I just... Where are we, I swear, I've got such a silly younger brother. You finally let it go. Where, Luigi? Finally let go of your main character syndrome. It'd be interesting if a Pokemon game actually explored maybe the player character letting go of some main character syndrome. Pokemon Black and White sort of did that, where it's like, it's this whole parallel between you and N, and N is the one that successfully awakens this dragon that joins him just because he's a cool dude, whereas you're stuck with this dragon in your backpack that refuses to come out. It eventually comes out during the most key moment and chooses you as a hero. But it is a very humbling moment where it's like, hey, N got his dragon, but you sure didn't. Just because just because N is just so cool that uh, <laughs> Zekrom or Reshiram just joined him because of that. So that's a kind of humbling moment. But, you know, it's kind of interesting seeing this, uh, this little story here. I'll probably talk more about it once we get the credits rolling and stuff. But it being about Kieran here kind of getting over his main character syndrome. But now that makes me wonder, what would a Pokemon game look like with a player getting over their main character syndrome? Like, Pokemon Black and White is probably the closest situation we've ever seen to it. You know, should write this down, yeah. Yeah, did he guilt trip the Legendary? Did he even really say anything to the, uh, Legendary? I thought that the, uh, le that the story was like, oh, the Legendary just detected his heart or sensed his heart and that he was a cool guy and that his emotions were pure and true and stuff. Let's join him and stuff. But yeah, you two must have been so scared. But you all shone brilliantly just now. You were truly dazzling. And in the end, our Harmonia even managed to catch Terrapagos. So I think we can consider our little expedition into Area Zero good and finished. Time to head back to Blueberry Academy. The frame rate, it's like dipping back and forth between 30 FPS and not in this shot. I'm not going crazy, right? It's weird. Ramblegast? That is. <laughs> Wah, Luigi. <laughs> The pitch black floor. Love to see it. Tumbleweed ghost. Okay. Yeah, first I've heard of it. Oh, that. I love how we trekked back to the other side of the world again for this conclusion. We're finally home. I need to get in touch with Geed. Oh, God. I have no idea what she just... Hey, Harmonia. But look. I know I caused a lot of trouble for the League Club and everyone. wanted to give everybody a proper apology, including you, Harmonia. So, I'm sorry. And, uh, I guess what I'm trying to say is... I want to make things right. So, do you think... I could start over from zero and be friends again? Who's saying hey? I'm gonna leave you two behind if you don't hurry up. So weird without voice acting. Do they not have shadows in this shot? I that's kinda cool how you can kind of see the dome there. That's cool. Am I gonna get copyrighted again? Credits roll at Sheeran. This sounds like a different theme. Wait. I'm down for it so far. 
E-Smile Engineering Co. I don't want to join E-Smile. It's a Toby arrangement. Oh, it's a remix of the uh, of Celestial. It's light so peace. Okie doke. Take care of their false souls. Yeah, the... Uh, I remember I briefly kind of learned part of this on guitar. Did I ever play it on the... On the... Uh, this playthrough? I don't know if I did. I might not have it memorized anymore. I'll probably look up the sheet music for it. But there was a time that I was trying to learn how to play it on guitar so that I could play it for my video essay so that I could play it and talk about it without getting copyright claimed since it would be my own cover but that never ended up happening well I guess I there was a little bit of my cover that was in the Scarlet and Violet video essay but just a short blurb of it because I don't think it turned out super well I'm not super confident in my own playing abilities yeah so it was a bit there <laughs> stick around for the after party any knockout all right well I guess now it's time for the review of uh that DLC in general from the oh gosh dang it what was it teal mask that's what it was and then the indigo disc um overall I think I liked that story more than I did the mainline game story honestly I actually thought that it was kind of interesting with it focusing on this guy getting over his main character syndrome that he had you know that I thought was interesting but it handled it kind of clumsily though yeah it is a little bit of a mess it did handle it kind of clumsily this is obsession with ogre pond was just kind of like huh why that seemed kind of odd yeah he could be a little bit of a goober but i do kind of like what it was they were trying to go for i definitely feel like it could have been handled better but the general thing that it was expressing i thought was interesting and that it would have probably been more interesting if it was applied to the player but then players would be complaining about like, what? I didn't get to catch the legendary Pokemon. This other NPC did. What's up with that? Like, you know, players would be pretty pissed off if there was a game all about getting over their main character syndrome, you know, that uh, that probably wouldn't sit very right there, but it would be really fascinating to explore. And I thought that it was interesting that that was the specific topic that they tried to explore here, where it's like, here's this character that wants to be the main character. He wants to be that special someone and it eventually has to accept at the end that Maybe he's not going to be the special someone that's like above everyone else. And he's just another fellow friend here that's enjoying time with his other friendos and out here doing stuff. I do generally like that message. Like, it was kind of clumsy and odd, especially during the teal mask. During the teal mask, that plot line was like, what the hell even? <laughs> As I discussed about when that part wrapped up, or when that part of the DLC, I guess, wrapped up. It's like, it could have gone the most typical way possible, and it went a way that was even more bland. Like, when uh, Kieran decides to tell to all the villagers that their entire culture and beliefs are wrong, and they just went and believed him. I thought for sure it was going to go the way of, like, they don't believe him, they kind of gang up on him as, like, this weak little kiddo there, and then Ogre Pond comes and saves him. And then ultimately joins us and not him and he's feeling butthurt about that. And they could have absolutely still played the story that way and told the same DLC 2 story here. But no, all the uh, all the villagers just immediately believed him. Just like, oh, our uh, this kid is telling us that our entire culture and beliefs are wrong? I guess we'll believe him. Yep, that, uh, cool. Like, what? Like, DLC 1 especially there was such an embarrassment of a mess. But I feel like... DLC 2 here was a bit better, you know? Kira nearly got the Dr. Maruki. It's okay to start over if you're fucked up. Yeah, just change your reality here. This is what we do. Yeah. Also, I'm totally gonna get copyright claimed for this. I have no doubt this is gonna get demonetized so dang fast. Whatever. Um, so, I do generally kind of like what they were going for, and I think that it was an interesting avenue to explore. One, I think my favorite part of the story, though, was when he actually threw the Master Ball. When I was saying, like, you know, he really wants to get his hand on a legendary and be a, like, special someone. And realistically, if the prize for becoming the champion at the BB League is a Master Ball, that means that realistically, he would have a Master Ball too. And in the most realistic scenario, he would use it on the, uh, on the legendary Pokemon there. But there's no way the game actually does that. But then... After he got out the legendary Pokemon and it started coming towards us, and he actually pulled out the Master Ball and threw it. That was good. That that took me by surprise. I liked that. That was probably my favorite part of the whole story. But overall, 
yeah, it was a it was a bit of a mess. It's not really going to be the kind of story that I'm going to be remembering for, you know, a long time to come or anything like that. But it had some interesting ideas that could have been executed better. I generally like what it was doing. It just handled it in a kind of clumsy way is all. And it was kind of odd at times, especially during DLC 1. Bing bong bong bing. This is an announcement for the following student. Harmonia from Naranja Academy. Miss Bride would like to see you in Classroom 1 4. She has some important news to share with you regarding the Tarassal phenomenon. Maybe I'll save that for next time. Yeah, I think same here. Honestly. He was kind of fascinating. I feel like he could have been handled better in DLC 1. His obsession with Ogre Pond was kind of very odd feeling. I feel like they could have better elaborated on he just wants to be like the special someone that does right and gets the ultimate hero kind of character Pokemon. I guess you can interpret it in such a way where it's like he figured that Ogre Pond was the real hero. Well, no, I guess the story was like Ogre Pond was kind of an outcast and misunderstood like him. So he was obsessed with Ogre Pond, I guess. But then that kind of devolved into I need to be the special someone and get a special Pokemon or something or other. I don't know. The, uh, there were definitely some interesting ideas there. It could have been handled a little bit better, elaborated on some of these feelings he felt and why, and then I probably would have liked it more. But the overall thing that I did with him, I thought was really fascinating. I honestly think that in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet in general as a whole, that Kieran is probably my favorite character, like, across the whole thing. Not even just in this DLC. You know, I would, uh, I would put Kieran above Penny Arvin or, uh, or Nimona. Honestly, since I have my whole video essay talk about various criticisms that I have with them. And I have my criticisms of Kieran here too, but I most like what it was that they were kind of going for with him. Um, then the music. Music of this rocked. This was pretty cool. The, uh, I do wish that the Generation 5 remixes of the, uh, of DLC 2 here were a little bit more orchestral rather than as much electronic-y kind of sounds, but they were generally pretty good, and I like them using some of the existing Gen 5 themes in new ways, like, uh, like Driftvale City, for example, being, like, this area theme as you're exploring around and stuff. Stuff like that was kind of cool, and some of the various light motifs and stuff that were used in the battles. And the light motifs that were used in the main battles, like Kieran's battle theme and the battle against Terrapagos, that was really cool. I am definitely going to track down the OST for the Trapagos battle theme and slap it right in my epic battle OST slash remixes playlist to be playing when I'm playing stuff like Smash Bros and stuff like that. That was, that was good. I quite enjoyed that. So, yeah, there's, I think that's all my praise out of the way. Actually, no, one more thing. I have one more thing to praise as we get into the gameplay. The DLC 2 double battles. I, uh, I wasn't sure what to expect when it was revealed that DLC 2 was going to be completely double battles. I was like, oh, maybe it'll just be like a very basic version of double battles. Nope, it embraced Pokemon Coliseum and was like, yeah, how about they actually do double strategies? And the double battles that were in the main game of Scarlet and Violet that were basically just in the one gym, that's it. I don't think the gym trainers or gym leader really did all that much double strategy per se. It just felt like here's generic double battles. Whereas in this, it actually felt like they were strategizing and the battles would actually pose a challenge because of these double strategies that they were doing. That I liked. Pokemon Coliseum and XD Gale of Darkness were a really good example of how just taking the Pokemon format and making every battle a double battle adds such an insane amount of strategic depth and turns what is otherwise like a super repetitive and semi-boring kind of thing once you start to get tired of it into something that, hey, here's all this more depth that you can explore. Like, that was one of the things I liked about Pokemon Coliseum, and that's why I liked about this with the gameplay. I wasn't finding myself getting bored of the battles because the battles were actually actively engaging me in this DLC. That I liked. Um, then there's the everything else with the gameplay. Um, this game's been out for over a year now, and it's still just as buggy as ever, if not more so, with some of these uh, DLC areas and stuff. Like, it is still a complete embarrassment, the state that they ship this in. Not just shipping the original game, but then the DLC, which itself costs $5 more than any other Nintendo, <laughs> like, season pass, like, DLCs. And it's like, man, really? And then just borrowing the whole format of, hey, here's some more past Pokemon that are available. But not all of them, there's gonna be ones that are stuck at home and, you know, 
be in situations like I outlined earlier at the beginning of this stream, so like six hours ago, where, you know, you get stuck in, whoops, get stuck in really crummy situations and, uh, not everything can transfer over. Some things you can use. Like, I was lucky to be able to use Sonder and Gladier here, I guess, because they're probably some of the more popular ones, but my goodness gracious. They're... I couldn't transfer over my Bolton like I was thinking about using my party here. So that's uh, that kind of sucks. And just basically using that as the excuse to get more home subscriptions and more revenue that way. More home subscriptions, more games. I think that Pokemon's general business model nowadays as a whole is just really, really sucky anti-consumer mess and it's becoming more and more expensive to be actively engaged with Pokemon as a franchise as opposed to just a singular game so you know that whole situation is really crummy and the quality of the games and content being put out is just feeling like it's getting more and more rushed and more and more broken like is this the glitchiest game I've ever played it might be I think the steepest competition for that might be something like Roller Coaster Tycoon Adventures or World. I was thinking about saying Last of Us Part 1 on PC. That was a really bad PC port, but no. This definitely takes the cake in brokenness over Last of Us Part 1 on PC. But Roller Coaster Tycoon World slash Adventures on launch might be pretty close competition, honestly. Those are... Oh boy, those games. <laughs> but yeah, let's see here. What about Exploration? I thought the area here was cool. I like the idea of here's the four different segments of different biomes and stuff like that and all sorts of different Pokemon that you can find in them. It just would help matters if it wasn't so insanely ugly and didn't run so insanely poorly. <laughs> That's why I felt. Oh, and other things gameplay-wise, this got so dang repetitive and annoying. <laughs> At least I didn't need to grind it too much for the main game here, but... I guess if you really want to get a lot of BP for whatever benefits it gets, you would have to be grinding that for quite some time, and grinding away at those is really boring, honestly. But yeah, we love adding more, making problems worse, seems like. By the way, the DLC size is almost the size of the base game. 5 gigabytes DLC plus 6.5 gigabytes base game. And their VGC are getting to the pay-to-win territory. It's been at that for a while, it's just been getting worse and worse as the years have gone on. For anyone that's not familiar with that, I would recommend looking up video essays on the topic where people have delved into how much it costs if you don't use any cheats to really get into VGC Pokemon nowadays because it's a it's a steep price. <laughs> it's a it's not cheap. Unless we forget forget the rave mall, that was that was certainly something in Last of Us. <laughs> Should be disqualified anyway for being a poor yeah. And apparently the original game of that wasn't broken at all. It was just the PC version that was. Such a broken, unfinished mess. I had such mixed feelings about Last of Us Part 1. Because it's like, wow, I can acknowledge this is a good game. It's just such a garbage version of it. I wonder if they fixed that game in the months since. <laughs> Fuck barbecues? Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't a big fan of that. And the fact that sometimes they just don't work. Like a friggin' sandwich that I made earlier that it just didn't acknowledge as a sandwich made for my barbecue there. And then it worked the moment I started streaming it. So dumb, man. Um, so yeah. Overall, I will say that I did enjoy this DLC more than I thought I would. But keep in mind that my frame of reference was this is going to be the exact same quality as Pokemon Scarlet and Violet main game was. I will say that... It got above my views of Scarlet and Violet slightly in terms of the story. Because of, like, all the interesting stuff with Kieran. And the gameplay. What with double battles. Apart from that, the quality is the same as Scarlet and Violet. But still, going in with the frame of reference of Scarlet and Violet. And assuming this would be the same level of quality. Yes, it was better than I expected. But it is still an absolute embarrassment to be releasing this in this unfinished state. And for a marked up price in a game that still a year after it's been released barely functions. I... I... <laughs> There's a lot of games that I keep on my on my shelf back there behind the 3D printer. Like all the physical games that I've ever owned. With the idea of, hey, if I ever want to return to any one of these games, I have the option to do so. And revisit some of these experiences that I had. Or maybe share those experiences with someone else. that Like family members and stuff like that. I This seems more like the kind of game that once it gets put on the shelf. 
it is never coming down from there. <laughs> this is what it seems like. That was a uh, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet in its entirety there. Gonna do the legendary catching. I might do a little bit. I'm not gonna do all of it. That's another interesting thing in regards to this DLC. Just like the Final Sword and Shield DLC, this introduces a whole bunch of legendaries that you can catch all over the world. Uh, it wasn't all over the world in Sword and Shield, but you know what I mean. You can catch all the previous legendaries. Except in this, it's not all the previous legendaries. What with the whole situation with home and you can't get every Pokemon. So, like, the Gen 6 legendaries, I think, are one example of ones that just aren't available in this game. So, there's a good handful of legendaries that you just can't get. It's not all of them, like in Sword and Shield. Even though this costs more than the DLC of Sword and Shield. And, unlike Sword and Shield, every single one of them is shiny locked. So... For those that are interested in shiny hunting and stuff, where it's like, hey, just like Sword and Shield, here's a whole bunch of legendaries, and now I can shiny hunt them in the most recent games. No. No, you can't. So, there's that. Cost of everything should be halved, that would fix it. <laughs> just, like, charge less for this. Can't catch all legendary because the summit items are limited, and it requires multiplayer. Yeah, I've heard that too, where it's like, you can't even catch all the available legendaries. But even the entire pool of legendaries available in this isn't all the legendary Pokemon like it pretty much was in Sword and Shield. So, one, not all of them are available, and two of the ones that are available, you can't quite even get them all anyway, unless you engage with the multiplayer and stuff. And speaking of, that's one thing that I should return to do, is at least the Entei thing. We got the Paradox Suicune, we got the Paradox Ry- Wait, did we get the Paradox Ryko? Wait a second. Did I ever do that? Wait. Wait. Where's Walking Wake? I think the Paradox Raikou was in a uh, DLC one, and I just never got it. I was about to say I should probably complete at least that trio as part of this series. That's what I should probably do. But uh, yeah, I only have the one. Raging Bolt is a parent quest thing. Oh. So if I want to fill up my decks, that means I got to give the Pokemon Company twenty-five more dollars get access to my Pokemon home Pokemon if I don't want to spend 3,000 years transfer a whole bunch over and then there's that oh I can do it like no real difficulty just slightly time consuming with transferring things from home it's just I have to give the Pokemon company more money so it's not like it's a difficult challenge or anything like that because like I said I had a living dex up apart from a couple mythicals all the way up to generation 8 Gen 9 is when I decide that that was a waste of time and I wasn't doing it anymore. So I have, like, all the, uh, all the older Pokemon. I can just transfer over whatever I need for my decks, but, like, so it's not a big deal. I can do it. I just gotta shell out for home if I want to do it without actually going around catching them all. But, yeah, we do what you mind training so you can finish your decks. As long as it's not, like, a super crazy amount. As long as it's not, like, hey, trade over 200 Pokemon one by one. Then I'll be like, ah, oh, no chance. If it's a few, I can probably help out. But, yeah, I gotta muster up the courage to give Pokemon more money first if I want to cover that stuff. And then, maybe I will. I'll, I'll probably return to this at some point. This probably won't be the end of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. I might cover a little bit of the Legendary catching some of the other events here and stuff. And, uh, you know, maybe the get that Paradox Legendary trio and stuff like that. Oh, two Scarlet Paradoxes? Oh, I haven't caught those. I had a Living Dex up to Gen 8. Like I said, Gen 9 is when I decide, screw that, I'm not doing that. <laughs> so, I have barely any Gen 9 Pokemon. <laughs> it's kind of the case, so those I don't actually have. It's just all the stuff up to Gen 8 that I had. So, yeah, I, I'll probably come back at some point and do a little bit more stuff. But if I don't, don't hold it against me. Um, <laughs> so, we shall see here. I know one other thing that I should mention is after my main Scarlet and Violet video essay, there has been some expressed interest and some questions about like if I'd ever do a video essay on the Scarlet Violet DLC. And the answer was maybe if I had the time. I feel like it's really not as worth covering as the main game was. And I feel like I have basically summed up my thoughts here at the end anyway. <laughs> it's kind of the case. If I have a lot of time, I might, but I'm more so leaning towards not right now and focusing on some of my more general gaming industry essays like I've been working on lately. Like, the game analysis that I did in this recent game design class that I was in. We did three game analysis throughout the term, two of which are already posted to my channel, one being 
the environmental narrative of Metroid Prime, and the other being violence in video games or depictions in video games, which was a more general gaming industry thing. And I'm currently working on a general gaming industry video essay on games as art, which was another game analysis that I turned in. But they had a time limit of 10 minutes for the assignments that were turned in, and I wanted to make something a little bit longer to do proper justice to such a broad subject, or at least do better justice to such a broad subject. So I'm currently working on that. And then from there, honestly, next semester is probably going to be my busiest university semester I've ever had. I might just take a break from doing video essays in general, but if I have the time to do it, I might lean towards doing some more short form general industry stuff. Or maybe I can do one on the DLC here that is a short form thing where it's more like 20 to 30 minutes, something like that, as opposed to seven hours that I can potentially see myself doing, but not talking about like every single little thing just hey here's the updates since the launch of the main game and since the last video essay here's the stuff going on with this because i feel like this is a lot easier to sum up the full thoughts on i don't need to go through every single mechanic like i did in the main game because all this stuff that was the case in the main game scarlet and violet essay carries over you know so maybe maybe i'll do something a little bit shorter form with this down the line i don't know give it a 50 50 i don't know we'll see how much time i have and what things are feeling like yeah um, but yeah, still an epilogue, but it's locked behind an exclusive item. Oh, but that might be worth looking up whether I, like, how I get that and how to do that and stuff then. Because if there's a whole epilogue, then it's probably the kind of thing that I do as long as it's not, like, an insanely tedious thing. But yeah, let's just see here. Do the troll one first for, uh, like, stuff in this game? Or what now? Yeah, a shorter video. Is it Evil Peach Pokemon, that epilogue? Oh, I saw some mention online about there being some new mythical, like, thing or Bob. But yeah. And then make the real DLC essay a Patreon exclusive, like your own DLC. Yeah, just do that. I, you know, I started the Patreon because I figured, hey, the day is going to come eventually that I jump ship from, uh, from Twitch to YouTube because, you know, Twitch always becoming, like, a crappier and crappier platform. It probably still won't be for a while. I'm still pretty comfortable here. But I'm sure the day will come eventually, and then that'll become, like, either the new subscriptions or, like, the whole channel memberships that I get a better cut there than I do here anyway. But, you know, channel memberships aren't as much of the YouTube culture and stuff. So I was like, oh, as of the Scarlet and Violet essay, maybe I should make a Patreon just in case anyone is interested in, like, fueling my capacity to make super crazy long video essays rather than spending time doing other work stuff that would support me during that time. So I made that just in case of that, plus the chance that I jump ship to YouTube one day. I don't think I have anyone on that at all from times I've checked. I've never gotten notified about it. So if anyone does ever join that, let me know because I might not know otherwise. I don't know if it notifies you or something like that. But I think that a lot of people that are interested in doing that anyway, just come to Twitch and then there's like Twitch subs and stuff like that. That is like a similar idea anyway. Like, I wasn't expecting all that much with that, but I was like, eh, I'll just make it just in case anyone feels like fueling that <laughs> that video essay making addiction of mine. And uh, then having that there also feels like more professional. I feel like I can put on my uh, suit and fancy tie and feel like a more professional content creator by just even having that in the description. So, you know, there's that. <laughs> That's kind of the situation with that. Yeah, we love six plus hour long video essays. I don't know if I'm doing another one of that length maybe ever again i can see myself doing several hour long video essays if i ever have the time i would still love to do my long one on xenoblade chronicles 3 that i already have like so much of the script made of it's just time <laughs> is what makes things tricky you know that's kind of why i'm going ham on all these playthroughs during this winter break because next semester i don't know if i'll have the time to do that so yeah i might well be streaming again tomorrow Actually, I might be going to work the day after tomorrow, so maybe I won't be streaming tomorrow. Or maybe I will for a little bit. Maybe I'll just work on editing or all my games as art essay. But maybe I'll be streaming again later in the week. I mean, I for sure will. I'm I'm going as ham on games here while I have the time. While I know I have the time to put into it. I'm going ham. Like, the other day was, what, another five or something hour stream? The day before that was a 14 hour stream? And then the day before that was starting this? Something like that. One of those background work streams, maybe? <laughs> what, you mean with uh, me video editing or just, like, stream at work? I don't <laughs> I don't know what this means. Also, I saved, right? I'll save again just in case. Because, yeah, it's, uh, it's 1 in the morning. I want to get some decent sleep, at least. <laughs> Wait, so which one? Stream me video editing? Oh, the video editing one. 
maybe. My video editor already lags a lot the crazier my video essays get, and I worry about <laughs> it lagging even more if I start streaming it. Maybe. That is a shorter form one. It's going to be like 20 to 30 minutes, something like that. But <laughs> shorter form. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. Mayhap I'll consider it here and maybe try it out and see if it lags things too much or something or other. And I can maybe do a little bit of that with the games art thing. One thing that I will mention with the uh, video essays is I've tried two different formats of recording when I narrate my scripts. One is through OBS like this. So basically what you're hearing right now and with the filters that come with that. And the other is through Audacity, which is like no filters, just the complete raw audio. And when I initially listened to it, the Audacity stuff usually sounds better. And it's like, oh, I should usually use Audacity stuff. But then when I actually put it into my video editor it, and listen to it in the video, it starts sounding worse. And my voice sounds like way scratchier than I hope that it sounds like. Um, no way, is that a character outfit that isn't ugly? Yeah, it actually is here, sort of. I still would prefer if we could have customizer jacket and pants and stuff like that. I can see if I can open it here and showcase a smidge. It might take a hot second to open it. Usually it takes a good while to open this project here. But yeah, I turned in like a 10 minute version for my class. I think I'm at like 22 minutes or something here. I haven't actually, where is it here? Games is art. I haven't actually gone at it for a little while now because I, uh, you know, I've been busy going ham with streaming stuff here. But I remember it taking a decent while to open. It was somewhere around that length. You know, something else that I have thought about doing, speaking of, like, forms of monetizing the channel when it comes to channel memberships and stuff like that, that weird YouTube equivalent to Twitch subscriptions that almost nobody knows about. There are a decent handful of people that are not subscribed to me. Members of the channel? Whatever terminology you want to use for it. And it's like, huh, I should probably make, like, more benefits for that as thanks to the people that are actually, you know, helping support me on a monthly basis here and stuff. So, something that I have been thinking about doing is just releasing my versions of the games as art essay that I turned into for my university project. Just like now, just like, hey, here's the thing that I turned in for university. But later down the line, the version that's coming out publicly is just that and more anyway, you know. Yeah, what Pokemon is that? <laughs> Wait, what Pokemon is that that you call the Lord of the United States? Lotus? Is that a new or regional form? That's just a new Pokemon. That, uh, apparently the Lotus is a, uh, Warframe reference, which I've never played. It was, a, uh, it was a Pokemon that was named and chosen for this, uh, for this journey around the beginning. So I tried to use a Warframe font and adopt, like, some colors and designs and stuff like that when I was doing that. Never played Warframe, but I tried to do it as best justice as I could. That was the case. Also... You, uh, let's see here. Let's just see. It's still loading here. Is the case. Oh, and Steam wants me to log in. Because <laughs> my computer restarted recently. Because it restarted without me telling it to restart. Because I wanted to update and stuff. It's still loading. I would like to show it a little bit. Maybe hear some opinions on the audio quality. Because I have narrated the last bits of this Games as, of, bleh, games as Art essay. But... I'm thinking about just completely scrapping that that version there and then just re-recording it on OBS, so what you're listening to right now. Because the version that is in there right now is one that was recorded with Audacity, and it... I don't know, it just sounds odd. I don't know. It's just very strange. But I might not be able to show this at all if it takes forever to load. So it might be get pranked, and we're not doing that. We, uh, we will see here. <laughs> will it load? Will it blend? Is the question. Progress bar is still at zero. How this works is it stays at zero for like ever. And then when it's almost done, it's like, uh, 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 and then it finishes. So I have no idea what progress it's at on loading this. But essentially how this essay is going so far is for my university submission version, I had two key arguments, two key paragraphs. One was on play as art and the other was on narrative as art and tackling how these are both potentially artful things within the uh, within the realm of video games and what gives video games their own unique artfulness. Um, but then in the version that I'm making for the channel, I'm adding two new paragraphs and two new key arguments. Uh, the third one is about how when I was researching this topic, I found out that a lot of game scholars will make the argument that games cannot be art because of the emergence that comes with play 
because the player can like choose to go and do certain things. So it is possible that they might never experience the thing that the developers crafted for them or might not experience it in the way that it was intended. You know, it's a lot more subject to interpretation and different experiences than any other medium. Whereas I, in the essay, in like the first paragraph, say that that doesn't make the distinction that games can't be art, but rather makes the distinction that the artist is both the developer and the player co-authoring art. Um, but in this paragraph three that I added, I kind of delve into that a little bit more. Like, does the emergence kind of negate the artful play? What are some examples where you might see some people making arguments of this? <laughs> like Undertale, where people would get mad when content creators didn't play in certain ways. Or Elden Ring, where people would get mad when people aren't playing in certain ways. You know, stuff like that. And I would art, and that paragraph kind of concludes with like, it doesn't diminish the artfulness, it just further enhances that everyone is experiencing like their own unique co-authored artfulness and then i felt like by the end of that and that was going to be the version i was going to release for the channel but then i was like oh i'm kind of putting up video games up on like this infallible pedestal like there is no issue to be had so for the fourth of file paragraph i was like okay let's delve into some situations where i feel like there are some decisions that undermine the artfulness of games and there are examples like uh you know rushing things out before they're complete like super over monetizing it or making it like the most insanely grinding thing ever and you know not having enough meaningful reward that you can obtain for free and stuff like that that doesn't make the distinction that it can't be art but rather takes this ceiling of potential of artfulness and takes it down notches or locks it behind certain things like paywalls and stuff like that and that's what i want to be the final paragraph there and then conclude being like yeah here's the artfulness of play here's the artfulness of narrative here's our own unique experiences and here's aspects that can undermine artfulness and this is how we can treat games as art that's essentially this video essay that i've been working on that is still not loading up yeah get pranked might just have to see the full thing when it's out i might just record that audacity bit with obs instead and see if it sounds better and yeah projects like that are the kinds of things that i kind of want to work on a little bit more than stuff on one specific game like this I think that it's really fun and interesting to tackle more industry-wide topics that apply to gaming as a whole. You know, I know that doesn't get as much views, but it's the thing that I am more passionate about doing because I feel like it's more important, these industry-wide topics, to be discussing. This thing isn't loading. I think I might just wrap up the stream today. <laughs> might also be going slower because I'm streaming. Might well be the case. I feel like at any moment now, it could potentially load up. Whatever. Maybe I'll stream a little bit of it later. What? Why doesn't it like me pressing that button? Maybe I will stream some development of it later if my computer seems like it can handle it. It does sometimes struggle with just the video editor on its own and <laughs> freeze and crash sometimes while I'm video editing. And this one, this project has started struggling a little bit lately. So yeah, we'll see. I don't know. I'll think about it and see how it goes and keep on working away at this project when I... When I get the chance here, see if I can get it published before the end of the year or maybe early next year or something. I don't know. We'll see. Appreciate everyone who stopped by and hung out for our adventure here with Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Not just with this DLC, but even the whole series up to this point. Especially considering it's a hundred plus part series. It's not exactly short. So anyone that's been in here for the long haul, I do really greatly appreciate it. Like I mentioned a couple times during the stream, could be spending your time doing literally anything and choosing to spend it here means a lot. So appreciate that. There might be some more stuff in the future. There is a chance that I might just peace out Girl Scout and be like, yeah, I'm done. But I would like to see a smidge more of some of the other content that's going on here. and at least showcase all the main stuff. So I'd say more likely than not, there will still be more than this. And just showcase some of the other stuff that's in here. But that is a problem for future me to deal with. And right now, present me has the problem of go to hell asleep. So <laughs> until next time, take care. Good night and see you.